Well, hello everybody, and uh, and welcome to uh, another episode of Walton's World. And uh, just thanks to Softball America for being a, a gracious host and uh, getting this platform out for for all of our viewers. So uh, welcome to everybody. And today I'm I'm super excited uh, uh, to talk with and and share the game with none other than the the, the most famous, and we'll say the most famous because I think this is pretty easy for every person that's been impacted by the game of softball to talk about the best, um, not only the best softball player, but the best human being to play in Natasha Watley. So welcome, Natasha. And uh, and uh, obviously to all Tasha's friends out there, it is Tosh. Uh, just uh, thanks for being on. This is, uh, this is exciting. Uh, I, as a coach, I'm excited. Um, as a host, I'm, I'm more excited. But uh, for the game. Um, just thanks for being on. I can't wait to hear what's going on in your life these days. How, how are you? Doing good. Thanks for having me. You were so fun. <laughs> like, um, just gosh, well, I don't know if you, I've even told you I have a two year old. And so that's been my life. I've been chasing a two year old for the last two years. Well, literally for the last year, you know, but she is keeping me on my toes. And thank goodness I was an athlete, right? So. Um, I'm trying to keep up, trying to keep up. So it's been good. So uh, what, what was her first word? Uh, probably dada. Um, dada and anything. I mean, she, I don't know. I'm trying to think her first word. I mean, she knows sign language, so everything is more. So anything that she sees, she's like hitting us with the more. So she, now she's saying more, please, more, please. So. I, I, I'm sure she's, she's fun. It's so fun. It's so I, fun. I, I, I stalked you a little bit, so I, I was waiting for you to introduce her. Um, <laughs> I, I saw her on your uh, on Instagram. I saw pictures, and I was I was really excited. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That was one of the coolest things my wife did for my youngest is teach him, you know, water and mm -hmm. you know being able to get. Yeah, it was really good. He didn't speak as early as my other two, but when he did, he was he was so much more prepared, and yeah. it helped all the whole family to communicate. Yeah, and like, and you know what they want, like that. I mean, that was the biggest thing too. When you know she's not talking, it's like, okay, like, well, does she fool? Like, does she want? And she's like, all done. Like, okay, she's good. All right. Like, it's just it. it's crazy. It's it's the most amazing thing. Like, I just I can't even believe that I get to experience this. So, being a mom. Um, it's like a whole nother world. It, it yeah. literally is. Well, that she's she's lucky to have a mom like you. And I I I, I know what kind of a, a humble person you, or humble player you are for sure. Um, humble person uh, is 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 right behind the player. I mean, you're amazing to have a, a mom like you. I'm I, I'm just I'm I'm excited to meet her one day. That's awesome. Congratulations. I can't I can't wait for you to meet her. Like. It'll be fun. And maybe one, maybe one day she'll play for you. That, that would be awesome. Natasha. Now I, I'm not as young as I once was. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's crazy. Well, to, I, I need to go through this. So this is, this is somewhat embarrassing for me. You know, I've been in softball and I, this is cool. I've actually lost track of the number of years I've been a softball coach used to say, well, this is my 10th year. This is my 12th year. Now I've been in the game longer than um, I've coached softball more than half my life. And now I'm a softball coach. And I always say my game, our game now, and mm -hmm. it used to be, it's like softball and I've, I've become integrated in this. And, um, but, uh, but you are, so this is the cool thing. I get to, I get to say a little bit about you and tell the, the story of you. And it's not going to be the complete story, but it's going to be the highlights and the, you're a first team four-time All-American shortstop. Now, I say that because being a first-team All-American pitcher is is super, super hard to do, but they have quite a few of those. They have like three of those on the first team or and maybe the at-large, but you're the shortstop, four-time first-team All-American, which it's hard enough to be the first-team shortstop once. You're four times, and, and I was on the field with you just um, – I really go back now. I think it was just two times um, as a coach watching you play, um, you know, firsthand. And, and I, I didn't really truly understand what speed, power, versatility was until you see you live and go, oh, so you got to play the corners in because you're going to bunt on us. 
got to play the outfield back because you're going to hit a homer. Um, you got to play your infield shallow enough to throw you out because you're only like four steps from first base <laughs> by the time you're going. In game in 2000, I had you from home to first from my, my stopwatch because I wanted to see what this route was really like. And I had you at a 2.57 in game off of a hit ball. And it's the fastest I've ever, <laughs> I've been on the recruiting trail and time, 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 2.57. And so I always tell people, they go, oh, my kid runs a 2.4. I'm like, no shot. Like, there's <laughs> no way Natasha Watley's the fastest home to first I've ever seen at 2.57. And, um, but four time All American, um, you were a national champion uh, in 2003. Uh, I think that was your, your senior year. Um, you were also the uh, Honda Award winner, which is for the the softball. Uh, it's basically I call it the softball Heisman. And then you were the Honda Cup winner, which is the best, the most, um, I guess the the most valuable female athlete of all sports across all of the NCAA. Um, and, and again, I, I go back and go, well, yeah, that's a that's an easy decision to make. You impact the game um, and and impact you know women in sport just uh, just just being you. And, um, and then you go on to being the, the Olympian, but let, let's talk a little bit about your, your time at UCLA. And I read through all your stats and I, and again, coach Enquist was on with me. She was my first, um, my first real guest. And I was, I was super nervous, but by the time I was three minutes in, I was like three claps, jumping up and down, <laughs> ready to go with coach Enquist. But so she had the most hits in UCLA history, the most decorated player and then she got to coach you. So I know how competitive she is to this day. I can only imagine if she said, Hey, Natasha, you only need two more hits to break my record. Like, I know this is like, I mean, let's be real. Is, is she, was that, was that ever a conversation where she was smack talking you at all? Uh, I mean, smack talking in other ways, not regarding stats and numbers. I mean, I've never met a woman. And I, I think I told you, you know, when we jumped on here, like she never took a day off, like of being amazing, of being inspiring, of being able to push people to their limits. Um, but those weren't like conversations we had. It was just like, how much better can you get? Can you reinvent? You know, when I came to UCLA, I was primarily a slapper. All I did was short game. I didn't really have that power game that, you know, you talked about. And so, I mean, she just like pushed me so much and I pushed back because I'm like, this is the athlete you recruited. You recruited a fast athlete. So let me just be fast and like, let me do what I want to do because that's where I was comfortable. And so, you know, just that's your job as a coach is to push people out of their comfort zone in that power game. I just like never wanted to own it. And so, um, you know, she just was always like, how good can you get? How much can you reinvent yourself? Like how versatile can you get? Like the, like the gamut is like this big, you could do so many different things. And so I've just never had someone push me so much. And, you know, I even told you too, like when I left UCLA and I didn't have her every single day, I'm like, how the heck am I going to do life? Like I just never had someone so much in my corner, so hard on me, but showed me so much love. Um, I don't think I become the player I am without her because just being able to just continually push me. And so yeah, it was never the goal to be an All-American. It was just literally like yesterday I was this, like, okay, so can I be this? Okay, so the next day I'm this, like, so can I be this? You know, like, so just like, how do you, you know, that 1% better every day, true cliche, but like, it was just like, literally that was my goal was like, man, yesterday I made two errors in the hole at practice. Like, I just want to make, I'll just make one today, you know, and then I'll make none, you know? And so just like, how can I minimize mistakes? How can I get better? And I've never been around a woman like her. Um, there, I, I can't compare her to anybody. Um, she is one of a kind and I feel so lucky to have to play for her. Yeah. I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head. I, I, I only know her as, you know, kind of a mentor and a professional coach to me. Cause she's, she's been that, like, she'll text me like, Hey, you know, and it's and really cool texts. Like, Hey, yeah, I, I need you to help me with this. Or I need yeah. this. And then I'll text her like, Hey, can you help me with, 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 with this? And, and she's yeah. always been, and at the end of the day, she'll always get you to come back to who you are. She doesn't yeah. care about the other people. It's like, here's who you are. Yep. How can you be better at what you're at? And don't worry yep. about the person across the street or you know, things. she's 100%. always been that, you know, it's just, just a straight yeah, shooter. Yeah. 
you know, it's really cool. Yeah, she's the best and true. Like she's and super genuine, right? Like it's, there's no fluff to it. And it's just, you know what you're going to get with her. And, um, and I, I've never, she's just so reliable and dependable. Like I literally can call, I could pick up my phone and call her right now and she'll pick up, you know, and um, what, and whatever I need. And it's like, you know, now it's like different, <laughs> different scenarios. It's more life scenarios. It's not necessarily, you know, should I hit or slap in this at that? It's now, you know, should I, should I go for that job or should I, you know, try to put myself out there more, which, you know, just different, different things. And I just, I'm so appreciative of, of her. I just, I, like I, I'm forever de indebted to her and there's no woman like her. There's, there's no, no woman like her. I, I can't say enough good things about her. She's, she is definitely, um, the most inspiring person in my life for sure. You know, as, as a, as a, as a man coming over and, and, and coaching softball from as, as a baseball coach my whole life and being a baseball player my whole life, but learning how to coach, I've always said this, you know, my wife taught me this and I'm sure my mom, you know, taught me some of these skills as well, but my appreciation for uh, a, 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 a woman who can tell you the truth, be honest, yeah. Yeah. motivate you, inspire you, work harder than you mm -hmm. and show you I mean, there's nothing better than that, uh, especially in sport, because there's there's not uh, there's a ton of them. They're just not maybe not uh, as as famous or as known as, you know, Sue Enquist. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm sure that the, the Oklahoma Sooner players can probably tell you that it's Patty Gasso, yep. Yep. you know, for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and there's plenty of other, you know, just really yeah, inspiring, yeah. motivating, honest, mm -hmm. um, hardworking. And I, I think that's one cool thing that that I've loved about my job as a coach is I've got to be on the field and be inspired, motivated, beaten. Um, we've won some games, but learn you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's very unique to have somebody like Sue Inquist um, be your coach, I'm sure, but yeah. also to be your I'm like, man, she's my friend. I mean, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're tired sure. in that way. That's, sure. It's really cool. But tell me about your, so you, you, and I, again, knowing the, the history of you in the game, um, you were probably one of the first real true exposed triple threat players. In other words, being able to bunt with your speed, being able to, 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 you know, to slap the ball, you know, where you wanted to, how you wanted to in most cases, and then be able to hit, but playing shortstop at a high level on a big stage in a big game that, that it's your your game was a lot of times one to nothing, two to nothing, two to one, three to two. So every play you made it short was was pivotal. Yeah. Um, and you played for three national championships. Yes. I think it was 2000, 2001 and 2003, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yep. And that's got to set you up because, I mean, obviously the first two you, 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 you earned second and the last one you won. Um, I'm sure that sets you up for, you know, your defensive game, your offensive game, mm -hmm. all the coulda, coulda, shouldas. Yeah. Um, tell us about your experience at the College World Series and and really as a as a Bruin champion. Yeah. I mean, just talking about shortstop in general, I mean, yes, I came in as a shortstop and, you know, freshman year I had to earn the position. Um, Chrissy Buck, who um, was ahead of me, and it was her and I, you know, battling. And just, I mean, but Coach Enquist talking about her again, like, created this environment of competing. Um, it wasn't just something given, you know, and yes, I was highly recruited and, you know, she said that I would have an opportunity. So I would play center and Chrissy Buck and we just kept going back and forth. And anytime I got on the dirt, like that's where I was most comfortable. It was just, you know, um, challenging yourself and, and becoming better. But I don't know, like I, I think about, how much I love offense. I love, I just, I love the game in general, but just falling in love with defense. And I think that that was a big part of winning championships. Like, like you said, games were close. Uh, either <laughs> every game that we were in all, I think all the championship games, I think we, we lost, I think that we were down by one run or we lost by a run. Um, but just how important it is to take care of the ball. Right. And um, just sometimes, and I, I think now there's so many more resources, but there was a period of time where offense was so cool and like just, you know, jacking it out the yard, like that's all you care about. And like, it's easy to get into the batting cage and come before practice, stay late and take your hacks, right? But how many athletes are coming before practice and taking ground balls before <laughs> practice and staying late and taking ground balls? Cause you actually got to move and you got to work and you know, like, are you throwing 
after practice and actually like working on everything, you know? And so I think um, college was really an arena where I really, I mean, yeah, I don't innately, I wasn't it's the player coming early and staying late. Um, but towards the end, I was like, this is what it's going to take to win a national championship because didn't get it done freshman year, didn't get it <laughs> done sophomore year, junior year. We didn't even make it to the championship game. So I'm like, okay, how am I going to have to, how do I have to show up to get different results? You know, doing the same thing, you're not going to get the same results. So, I mean, literally like just took so much pride in my defense more towards the end of my career. And just, it's important to take care of the, take care of the ball. I'm going to get done at the plate, but it's going to keep us in the game if I can take care of the ball at short. And so um, just really embracing that. I think it was, it took time, it took time to get there. Well, it's funny. I, I'm going to, I'm going to use a quote that I, I read about you and um, because you just said something that, you know, again, winning a championship is, I mean, you don't realize how hard winning a championship is until you don't. Exactly. And you don't, and, and you don't, you don't like, oh my gosh. And you, so one of your quotes that I love this, it says, once you taste winning, you just want to keep replicating it and it makes you fall in love even more with the game. And I, I read that quote and I, I wrote it down because like, oh my gosh, that's a, a beautiful quote. But in, in theory, you had tasted the, 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 the agony of quote unquote defeat. Mm -hmm. And you were trying to fall in love with the process mm -hmm. to be better at the game. Is, is that mm -hmm. accurate? It's very accurate. I mean, what better lessons <laughs> do you get than when you lose? Right. Um, I got to change something. How can I be different? How can I show up different? Um, I, 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 not that I ever value, like I, it's definitely in hindsight, <laughs> but when you're going through it, it's like heartbreak because you are doing a lot. You are pouring a ton into the game. And when you come up short, it is like a boyfriend breaking up with you. It's like, what? I mean, I just, I, have put in so many hours. I put in so many blood, sweat, and tears, and you don't want to like give me the results. You don't, you know, it's just it's it's heartbreaking. And so um I, I think the definition of a great player is like how do they respond? Like what do they do after? Who do they become after? And man, like my biggest life lessons are losing. <laughs> and like I, I just I I now can value them because I feel like, okay, like the world does not end. I think it's an, it's now an opportunity to change things, to get better, to become somebody I may not have thought I, I could become, you know, by after experiencing a loss. Well, as the, the coach in me sits here, and, and again, I, I wasn't nearly the player um, that you uh, were or recruited to be. But the things that I learned as a as a younger player um, was the, the work ethic piece. And I'll never I, I, I've said this story to my players at times. I showed up to my first ever practice. And so I was fortunate that I went to play at Cerritos Junior College in California, not too far from where you grew up in Irvine and had some amazing coaches. Um, as a matter of fact, one of your uh, former coaches, uh, Kelly uh, Inouye, her husband Gerardo and I went to high school together and played at, at, at the same JC. So there's a lot of connection out there with baseball and softball players. And I'll never forget this, Natasha. I showed up to my first practice. Practice is at two. I get there about 1245. It might have been one, but I know I was at least an hour early. And I look out on the field and there are people everywhere. They're on the cages. They're on the dirt. They're in the outfield. They're, I'm like, what? I yeah. watch. I was panicking. I started sweating. Okay. I didn't know what was going on. I, and I walked up to the guy and said, Hey, I thought this was at, practice was at two. And the guy goes, it is, mm -hmm. this is early work. And I go, what's early work. <laughs> goes, this is where all the good players learn to become great players. Yeah. And what he really meant to say was, the sorry players like you don't start until two o'clock, buddy. Mm -hmm. like that's mm -hmm. And yeah. I, was, I was blown away with, wait, wait a minute. Coaches say practice starts at two o'clock. How does practice start at 1245 or yeah. 1230 or 12? And I'm sure that's what you're talking about with being yep. the early work versus yep. the after work. Yep. But it's your work. Like you're choosing to be there. I'm sure that's the best work that you ever put into your craft. Yeah. 
and like I said, like it, and you know, just to your story, like it wasn't innately in me, you know, like I wasn't innately the person that showed up early and came and stayed late. Like I just wasn't. And, you know, coach Anquist would always tease in a sense, but her way of pushing me was like, you know, when God was giving out talent and he just like overfilled your cup, Tosh. But when he, you know, gave you that work ethic, it, like he just tipped a little bit of water in there, you know, but like, her, you know, <laughs> like, but, you know, a testament to her being able to be direct. And it was like, oh, okay. So like, that's what's needed. But I'm like, you know, I'm still putting up numbers. I'm, you know, getting on base, but it wasn't like, building that trust with it. And I think like just building the trust with myself, building trust with teammates, just the, the value of just putting in the work. I mean, it's, it's like, yeah, it's one thing to do it, but to really show up and be intentional about it and just the power it does. I, I just think the confidence it just breeds into yourself. is super important. So um, yeah, like I, can proudly say, I don't know if it's proudly, but I, I, I innately wasn't that, but I became, I had to be, I became, by my senior year, I definitely was doing a, a, a whole lot more than my freshman year. And I think that's just the beauty of a journey. Um, how you start is not how you have to finish. Um, I think that's what's so beautiful about sports, so beautiful about softball. You can constantly reinvent yourself. You can constantly make adjustments. And like, I think that's the thing I value the most about my journey is like, man, like who the heck was that 18 year old? <laughs> like, I thought I was, you know, I don't want to cuss, but as you know, like the, yeah. I thought it was everything, you know, and a blue chipper, highly recruited. And then man, and then just, you get humbled real quick, you know? And so it's like, how are you going to, how are you going to respond? You know, are you going to just crumble or, you know, learn from the lessons and, and grow and show up for the early work, become that great player, you know? So it's just a lot of lessons that I, I, I truly value. Well, in, in today's day, like, so you, you went to, you know, uh, in, especially in Southern California, you went to the most storied softball program in the entire world. We'll just call it that. Cause that's really what it was. UCLA, uh, a national power, getting the best of the best players year in and year out. And, and, and obviously and getting a, a great education and, living close to the beach and having the whole, you know, the whole lifestyle, you know, it's a complete, complete package there for you. I'm sure growing up, but the, the key, you know, to me, as I'm, as I'm listening to you talk, you know, but yet you didn't win a national championship till your senior year and to all the alums that came before you and all the fans, if they had social media back then, Oh my gosh, your inbox would be full of, Oh, <laughs> Hey, Good job, Natasha. You're the best shortstop in the history of the game, but you're still coming in second. And how, yeah. how do you, because your own peer pressure, your own team pressure, your own yeah. program pressure, I'm sure was tremendous going into your senior year. Yeah. Well, Coach Walton, I don't know if you know this. We were threatened to be the first class, my class. So there was four of us, Tria Flowers, Monique Mejia, Toria, Awe Lua. The four of us came in together as freshman, we were threatened to be the first class to come through UCLA without winning a national championship that senior year. So I couldn't imagine having social media, but media that, I mean, obviously we would still do interviews and like that was all they talked about. And so, I mean, even just having that pressure within us, like, of course we want to win. That's why we chose to go to this, this, you know, the winningest program in history at the time and still, you know, still whatever, you know, <laughs> but, but I think that's why you, you have to continue to show up and you've got to figure out, you've got to, you've got to quiet the noise. And I, I think that that was a big thing. And, and I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. And so I hats off to athletes nowadays of having social media and people having that direct access where they can get a DM and, you know, it's just, I couldn't even imagine, but you have to create those barriers. And I, I think that was so huge, even like just having those interviews and having to address it, it, it hired the stakes a little bit. And it was, I used it as motivation, like, shoot, like, well, why not? Like, why not us? You know? Yes. Like, of course you don't want to be <laughs> coined as the first class to like not win a national championship, but um, shoot, I was going to, I was going to, try, you know, like I was going to put everything in there and, and, and like 
if we don't come up with a national champion, at least I put in all the work. I can lay my head at night knowing I put in everything to um, to to become a champion. And um, I think I would have not been as happy not putting in the work and coming up short. I, you know, not sure if I could like look myself in the mirror. And so I think those were the choices that we had to make. And so um, using all of that <laughs> noise a little bit, trying to quiet it down, but um, you know, just it hired the stakes a little bit and I used it as motivation for sure. Well, you had one of the best years of your career, your senior year and the number of hits that you produced and the number of big hits and big games. Um, and whether it was a bunt, whether it was, I mean, I always, you know, joke. So I, and you don't know this story, but in 2010, so you're, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about your, I really want to hear all about your international experience and, the, the that part of your your journey but in 2010 um don dinanatis who obviously you played for the u triple say pride as i think it was besides playing over in japan it was your longest professional team that you played mm -hmm. for, for, for for an extended amount of time mm -hmm. so in 2010 don and we're in nashville tennessee at the nfca convention and don's coming down the escalators and he stopped me and said hey tim walton i'm don dinanatis of the u triple say pride we're moving our team from virginia down to orlando and um, I, I want you to be the coach. And, and I told him, no, I said, I can't. There's no way. Well, then he called me again. And the third time he asked, I, I, I took it. And well, I, I actually pitched it to my athletic director. My athletic director said this to me, he goes, his name is Jeremy Foley, tremendous human being and uh, just a, a great man for women in sport on this campus. He said, how is it good for the Gators that you're coaching yeah. in the summer? And I said, and I laid out the lists and I said, here's the list. And it starts with Natasha Watley. And he goes, I said, Natasha Watley is by far the greatest in the box player of anybody in the world. She can bunt, she can slap, she can hit. And I didn't know you as a person, but I knew you from studying the game that if I want to be better as a coach offensively and defensively, I need to learn from the best. I need to watch you work. I need to watch you compete. I had no idea that I was going to fall in love with the person, probably more than the player. Like you were one of the coolest, best workers. Like you knew what you needed. And if it needed more, you put more in. If it needed less, you put less. Like I remember one day you said to me, Coach Walton, it is what it is today. It's Sunday. It's a long, I'm not putting any more into it because it's probably not going to help me today. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh, this is somebody who has a really good, just <laughs> sense of who they are and what and, and what they're going to be and and you played the game the right way you played it hard you played it smart um you just did so many things and i i told my athletic director that i want to get better you know i want to get better as a coach and i learned from i i, I feel like i'm a learner like i just don't like to make the same mistake mm -hmm. twice and watching you and then and caitlin and you know and being able to have some really good healthy debates with Jessica Mendoza and, um, you know, having Kat and then, and then you add in Danielle Laurie and Jen Sowling and Ashley Charters and Lauren Lappin and, and Megan Willis. I mean, Megan Willis is one of the best catchers of all time. And then you, and then you got Kelly Crutchman and, and, and Charlotte Morgan. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. And then I had mine and Francesca and Kelsey, but the thing that I said to him was you, because in my opinion, just watching you play, you did so many things that just didn't look natural. Like it was like, oh, I want to hit the ball that way. So I'm going to do it. Oh, I want to hit it over the fence. I'm going to do it. Like I know everything learning you was you worked at it all, but it just looked so easy. And so you design like when you wanted to hit the ball on the ground, you hit the ball on the ground. Like it was amazing to see that. And that was my sell to him. And he goes, Jeremy, I want to win a national championship and I need to get better, but I can't get better because there's no more Olympics. There's no more. I want to get better by learning from the best. And 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 obviously the, the pride team was an accumulation of some of the best players to really ever play the game. And yeah. I was fortunate. Like even though I was the coach, I still felt like I was constantly yeah. my head was on a swivel. I was learning, I was paying yeah. attention. And then you taught me, like, hey, Coach Walton, we just want to we want we want structure. We don't want to just be the pros. We yes. want to be, we want to be a team. And I yeah. think it's me listening and learning yes. and we had the fans and the growth of the game, the things that were necessary, but we also had, you know, the bodies to manage and to take yeah. care of the people. That and were I think, 
Yeah. And I think that that like was a testament to you. And when we heard that you were coming to coach us, it was like, you know, maybe me and Caitlin were like, oh man, like we're not getting in this lineup because we don't hit home runs. Like he does, you know, he's not going to want to coach us like, oh gosh. But I think that that's like what I, that's where I, I earned so much respect for you because you came in and you managed us. You, tr you treated us like professionals and um, you created that structure. You created this like, hey, you know, I'm going to be there early. I'm going to throw you front toss, like I, whatever you need to get better. And I, I think that like a lot of young coaches, just hearing that, that you came to learn and it wasn't coming to show how much you know, it wasn't coming to show um, this is how I play the game. Like you really breeded this, you know, I want to learn and we wanted to learn from you and you taught us so much. And like, I added so much to my power game working with you. And I think just, um, I, I just think that that's like so huge, just, you, you know, hearing your side and like, now I don't think we've ever had this conversation of like hearing the side, but those two years that I think it was two or two or three yeah. that you were two that you were with us with pride. And like, I think that those are my favorite years because it was this professionalism and it was like this dynamic of learning from each other. Um, so I, I just think a lot of coaches should hear that because so many times, you know, I always associate with coaching, like how much do you know, you know, and like, that's not what the game, that's not what the game is about, right? When you're coaching. Yes. Obviously you're teaching, you're learning at the same time, but it's that relatability of creating this relationship with players. And we created a, re a relationship with each other where we were able to learn from one another to create, you know, our team was in you know, all those names that you just named. We were ridiculous. Like, well, um, I, 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 I don't forget it. It just doesn't come off my, yeah. out of my mouth clearly. Yeah. But I mean, probably one of the best third baseman and competitor and clutch players in Andrew Durant. Like I always, Dre, I, I always leave Dre out and I don't, Dre, I'm sorry. It's, I know, Dre, we love you. We love, we love you. you. You're the best. I mean, she's, yeah. she, I mean, she she's is the best. really one of the best. And he does. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed though that that's those summers. My family got to enjoy, you know, being mm -hmm. around and um, I enjoyed it because I really, I honestly, I, I say it in the top is it's the reason why we have been able to reinvent ourselves at Florida because we were the power hitting team that always came up short in the national championship. Like we were good, but we gave up too many runs. We didn't play good enough defense. And, and we just kind of, we, we added a slapper into the lineup because it was necessary, not only to train practice wise, but also in big games, putting mm -hmm. pressure on the other team when we couldn't hit homers, Yeah, you know, and, 100%. Um, and I learned that from you. I learned that from, you know, from, from Caitlin and just being able to understand how to, mm -hmm. you may not get a hit every time, but you're putting pressure on the defense all the time. And it's, yeah, it's I huge. Um, I love that. I love it, it. It, it was, it was a really, I mean, it was really, that was the main reason I just, mm -hmm. I had to get better. I felt, I felt confident, but there was still so much more to learn mm -hmm. and, and seeing an opportunity where USA softball wasn't, you know, uh, on the center stage anymore with mm -hmm. taken out of the Olympics uh, prior yeah. to you know, 2008. But so let's talk about post soft or post college softball for you. You, 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 you finish your career at UCLA. Um, at what point in time did you start playing um, for Team USA uh, and whether it be the the national team or I, I know there's so many different names, the elite teams, the national team. When yeah. did you get involved in the USA program? Yeah, my first year was 2000. So that was right after my freshman year at UCLA. Um, okay. That officially made the team. So prior to, I had tryout for a junior team, didn't make it, you know, and also a pivotal moment in life. Um, but my first year was 2000, um, playing on the national team, and I'm playing with Lisa Fernandez, Michelle Smith, Laura Berg. I mean, you know, women you look up, I looked up to, and I can't believe I'm on the same field with them. And so it probably took me probably a good year or two to go over the fact, like, that I was playing with them that I needed to like realize like uh, Natasha, like you're here for a reason. Like you gotta, you know, learn from them and compete. Like I just was in awe for so long. Um, so I just can't even, you know, I still can't get over that. I got to play with these women that I looked up to and um, just the way that they approach the game. I mean, I, you know, I could talk about Lisa Fernandez for hours, just the passion, the, her preparation, no athlete I've ever encountered um, had the skill, but then also had the work ethic like her, you know, just an incredible athlete on the field of how she prepares. 
Um, so yeah, that 2000, which seems like another life ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was my first year and I was the, I was the youngest or uh, Kat was the youngest. Right. Yeah. So um, I'm like a year older than Kat. So her and I were both the youngest. In, in 1999, that was my first year in softball. And I got the job uh, two weeks before the season started at Oklahoma. It was my first softball job. And we had a freshman pitcher named Jennifer Stewart. And Jennifer Stewart's from Yukon, Oklahoma. Uh, after her freshman year, she had a good freshman year, not a great freshman year. She flies out to Southern California and plays for the Southern California Athletics. And I believe the shortstop was Natasha Watley. And you guys won ASA Gold Nationals that year. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and that was when the college players could go back and play. And I thought that was really healthy for the, for the collegiate game because yeah. – those players could really get better mm -hmm. and, and learn to be leaders. And, 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 but she came back after that summer and said that one of her coolest experiences was playing with you. She really mm -hmm. complimented just, even though you were a senior, I believe in high school that mm -hmm. year, she said, what a great player, great person. And she, she talked about you before you became, you know, the, the, the four time all American national champion. She talked about that time with you being the, the glue, even though she was a, a a little, you know, a young kid from Oklahoma, you were the glue of that, that team. And, and mm -hmm. from the sounds of it, she was necessary for you guys. Like you guys needed somebody to kind of help you. Yeah. I'm laughing. I'm like, she said that I was the glue. I'm like, she was the glue. <laughs> There's no way we win a national championship without her. Like, I mean, and you know, obviously we're like, who's this girl from Oklahoma? You know, all the, our, all us little Cali Southern Cal girls <laughs> and, I mean, we don't win a national championship without Jen Stewart and just her feistiness and again, willingness to learn and then a willingness to like lead and just man, like, and then you know, I then come around my freshman year and who are we facing in college? UCLA, <laughs> Oklahoma, that's your guys' first national championship, right? right? Is yep. what well, that was 20, 2001 or that was 2000, 2001? 2000. But 2000. I don't think, I don't think she's the pitcher or player that she was that year without you and your team and that experience of her actually accomplishing she was on a good team before yeah. that was that was the ultimate confidence mm -hmm. builder for her like yeah. she really grew from that moment that's cool to hear but yeah, not cool yeah. on the receipt not cool on the receiving end you know yeah, it just goes um, back yeah. to you being willing to share the game <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean just I'm if I'm not mistaken, though, you did your part. You had three hits in that game. So I, I, did, I didn't. I mean, like, it was a battle. It was a battle. Like, we, yeah. I mean, just those were the days, you know, playing six, seven games. I think maybe we got in the loser's bracket and had, and I think she threw every single game. Like, she was a little machine. Yeah. She, I, I remember seeing that, the, the, and her off speed pitch and her, you know, change were really knuckleball yes. change. Really Ridic good. Yeah. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So, so cool. You, so your time with USA softball and we'll, we'll, uh, I, I think that I, I want to segue the, cause again, as I talk about this, our podcast is really about growing the game and what I have, I was a history major in college <laughs> and, um, my, I, I taught my final capstone, uh, class that I had to take to graduate. My last one, um, was women in sport. And so that was my, you know, that was my last one. And I, I probably chose it for the sport more than I chose it for the, the women portion of it until I got into the class and I learned and I learned. So I'm trying to make my podcast be a little bit about the history of the game, the people that came before mm -hmm. social media and all the stuff yeah. that we are now today. Yeah. And you're a huge part of that and your teams. So you joined Team USA in the summer of 2000, mm -hmm. probably right in and around uh, the gold medal games. Uh, I think Sydney was 2000, 2004, yeah. you're on the gold medal team in Athens. And then in 2008, you're on the silver uh, medal team in Beijing. So you go from being a four-time All-American Olympian. How do you manage, train, prep, prepare? I, I know there's international travel, there's international play. And, and I think it would be really cool because th there's a lot more people doing it now than when you play. There was only mm -hmm. a few of you. Mm -hmm. You you opened up a door. I think Michelle Smith and Lisa Fernandez and some of the great names went yep. over to Japan and really helped them become better trainers, preparers, yeah. learning the game from them. Yeah, but you're the best position player, probably the ever foreign player to go over to, or the first real position player. Mostly it was always pitcher catcher, and you went. Right. Tell me, tell us about. 
I just opened up a whole bunch of you, Yeah, I was like, where do you even want to go with that? I mean, best decision I ever made. Um, I will say after 2008 Olympics, obviously we knew we weren't going to have um, softball in the Olympics the next go around. And so I just knew I wasn't done. And it's just, it's crazy to even know that now, because if you were to have talked to me in college, like I didn't even think I was going to play past college. One, because I didn't see the opportunities. That's one. But two, I just didn't envision myself playing. Like, I'm just like, this is it. Because that's all you worked for in high school was just to get to college. And like, that was it. Um, so when 2008 came around, like, I really just had this feeling of, I just want to extend my career. And the best advice I ever got from Lisa Fernandez is play as long as you can. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because she's like, the lights will turn off one day. And it's just you can't play forever. You just can't. Um, you can be around the game. You can be in the game, but you can never play. You can't play the game forever. So when the, op I didn't, the opportunity didn't really present itself. It's something that I seeked and I had communication with, you know, Toyota and they said, Oh, great. Yeah. We don't really take position players. If you find us a pitcher to bring with you, we'll consider you. It wasn't even like, we'll take you. It was like, we'll consider so I'm like, shoot, like I need to find a pitcher. So I go tell Monica, Monica is getting flooded by every Japanese team. Monica Abbott, every Japanese team wants her. And I'm like, Monica, like, let's just go play for this, you know, Toyota. We know what Toyota is. Like we know Toyota cars. We'll go for one year and like, we'll just say that we did it. And we ended up, I mean, I played eight season. Monica played for 14 seasons. <laughs> the best decision coach Walton like that I have ever made. Um, I never thought that I could learn more. I never thought that there was more championships to win. I like, I never thought that I could be get better. Like, I mean, I feel like there was this period where I just was so mature mentality wise, just, I, I was, I was 27 when I started there. So it was, I was 27. And then when I retired, I was 35. Um, so just my mentality, like I was just so much mature and like, I still was able to like make quick adjustments and still get better. And like, but it was like, my adjustments were so fast and I just was a smarter player. My softball IQ was like so much higher than I was than when I played in college. In college, it was pure athleticism and you're still like in this vulnerable state and you're still like growing and learning. So my biggest advice to college athletes now is like looking to extend their career because when you can get, when you can meet, when you can have the skill and you can have the mentality reach, like, and you're playing at this high, high level, the game is so fun. Like I had so much fun. And there was like this period of time where I like, I couldn't get out if I wanted to, because I was just so dang smart. Like it was just like, <laughs> and it's not like, it, 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 it's not, you know, like, I, it, I don't mean that to be like arrogant. Like it just like the game was so fun because, um, the maturity level was there. It was like, yeah, like if I, if I do get out, like next time around, like I know my adjustments and like how fun to play this game when you know you can like do these little things. I'm going to move up in the box. I'm going to get on the plate. Okay, last time I put down a bunt, like I'm going to stand in and I'm going to try to, jack. you know, it's just like it was so fun. No, we'll repeat so that because I think that was, so you put down <laughs> a bunt for a hit and then you, you said to yourself, you're going to do what? I'm going to stand in and jack one. <laughs> like, but I think that's so cool because that there most people are so consumed with I got to get a hit, and if mm -hmm. I didn't get a hit my last at bat, I'm going to do something totally different the next at bat, so I can get a hit. Yeah, but you were. I mean, you were. I don't. I actually joked one time. I said, "Oh, Natasha was designed. She wasn't like she was just <laughs> designed to be unbelievable." Because like, you just thought, and like so, you talk about maturity. Your thought process and your intentions are just different than most. Um, I mean, I now granted, I know success helps that confidence, yeah. but you always had a way that was so um, different. It was, it was, um, uh, hey, last time I chopped the ball up the middle, my next at bat, I'm going to chop the ball up the middle again because they can't stop it. I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's a great idea. I'm yeah. thinking you're going to try to jack it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun. I mean, just the maturity level. And I, and then, and I think the other layer on top of that is just Japanese culture learning from Japanese players, it is ingrained in their culture, the work ethic, it's it's part of their culture to show up early, stay late. Um, but I think there was like so many similarities in the sense of common goal, we all want to win. 
Um, but like how we do that was a little bit different. So like adapting to their way of literally like we would practice from like nine to four, five every day. You bring your lunch or we have, they provide lunch, but like you literally are parked at the field every single day and to like buy into that was hard at first. Cause it was like, well, we just have three hour practices and we get it done and we still win. But I think, okay, well I'm here experience it and buy in and let's see what happens. Let's see how much better we could get. It was, it was incredible. I mean, yeah, like I couldn't even, <laughs> I couldn't even process like being on a field for eight hours now today like that. But it was a time in my life where, you know, didn't have kids didn't have a family and like my life was dedicated to the game and just like, how good can you get? How many championships can we win, you know, collectively? And so, um, best decision I ever made was it's to awesome. go play in Japan. Yeah. Uh, and I, I know, you know, again, I know you and I know I, I got to see you, uh, you know, obviously I got to see at the beginning of your career in the, in the, on the same field, but to be in the same dugout with you and work and practice and train. <laughs> and that was the one thing that I really, really enjoyed. Like you, you talked about putting together the structure that I put together for practice. Like I couldn't wait for practices because I wanted to work with not, not to put my, my name on or my late. No, I wanted to work with Natasha. Mm -hmm. I wanted to work with Caitlin. I wanted to learn mm -hmm. the things that we were learning. It was so much fun for me to learn. Um, but one of the things that I, I read, and I know this about you just because of your passions, but I read this as well. It's, it's again, it's a quote, um, but I think this is, this is, I hope this sums up you as a person in a way that it talks about your, your, your just the greatest decision you made, but um, it's important that girls and boys dream what they want to dream, be who they want to be, and do what they want to do. And we have a huge void in the United States, especially for softball players, mm -hmm. to be able to continue yeah. playing sport or playing softball, especially after college. And I know that was you're one of the few that have an opportunity to go play yeah, um, yeah. and make you know make a living and be a professional softball player. You know, we've got uh, Athletes Unlimited, which I think they're doing a great job of being able to at least continue the lifeline and get the yeah. television exposure and things like that. But talk uh, talk about your passions of yeah. what I know this about you. You don't care if the athletes today have it better than you had it or better than the players before you had it. You want everybody to have you know, what they want to have, what they dream. Yeah. Of. No, I mean, I do want athletes to have better than what we have, you know, like a, a big part of anything that we experience as humans is leaving something better than you found it. Right. And so um, I, I, I pray that our game gets a competitive pro league here where athletes don't have to go to Japan, you know, and yeah, obviously athletes unlimited is that, and it's, you know, only a selected amount of athletes, you know, and there's, now our game has grown so much. There's so many college athletes that are coming out and have nowhere to go. Um, and I, I just, I, I truly believe that period when you leave college and that maturity level hits you and that skill level hits you, like to be able to play the game at that level, like there's nothing like it. And I, you know, I just, I wish every athlete could experience that where they can extend their career and really pay, play freely. And, you know, like that time in college is like so condensed and so short, like the four, those four years go real quick. And to be able to extend that 10 years, 15 years, I played, I don't even know how I, my math isn't working, but what I paid 15 years after college, um, 15, 16, my math isn't working, but, um, man, like just what an incredible opportunity. And I just, I was, I just feel lucky. I was so lucky that I found a, a team that would consider me. <laughs> and so um, I just, my dream is we have a pro league that is thriving and another platform beyond college where it's an extension and, you know, a, a pipeline for athletes to, to continue to extend their career. So one day I, I, I feel it. Like, I feel like we're close to it. Okay. So that's, that's where, that's where I'm headed. So now mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about growing the game. And mm -hmm. again, I I've always been an advocate for people. And, and if, if, if there was somebody watching today and they're like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to research Natasha Wiley. I'm going to learn about Natasha Wiley. I would encourage uh, mm -hmm. whether you're in college, whether you're a pro, whether you're, you know, you're eight years old and you're wanting to learn 
how to be a better slapper, a better player, because the the amount of information and the way you teach. I know you talked about Coach Enquist and offline. You talked about how having her as a coach doesn't make you feel like you are as worthy of a coach as she was because she was so amazing every single day of your of your really of your life. Mm -hmm. But you're amazing. Like you, the 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 gifts that you have the gifts, the ability to teach people. Like I sent you a text one time. I had a, I had a young slapper. I said, Hey, can you just give me some drill sequences? And you sent me a quick video. It was, it was one of the Japanese players that was, you know, that you were playing with in the pro league and she was going through a crossover sequence with her slap and her top <clears throat> her, her hands were already, she was already in her crossover position. But so you talk about one day there can be, and I know you have an, an MLB ambassador title mm -hmm. to your, to your resume. Talk to us about what you think, because there are a lot of people, and I remember Don Dinanata saying this to me, and I never, never thought of it this way. Why wouldn't more people invest in professional softball? You're investing in professional baseball, so especially minor league baseball. Mm -hmm. If you invest in professional softball, you can lose less. Like it's, <laughs> no, it's like, wait, what do you mean lose less? He's like, well, the amount of money for a 142 game schedule and all the stuff, and then, and then what you're gaining, mm -hmm. you're gaining role models for yeah. young for young girls and boys because i see plenty of boys yeah. wearing natasha watley pride jerseys or mm -hmm. wearing skylar wallace's mm -hmm. jersey you know at our games i mean plenty of boys are doing mm -hmm. that so what what are what are you doing talk about that for 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 the game and then what can we do more to support mm -hmm. what you're doing because i'd support anything that you put your name on oh my gosh um well i mean pro league specifically i mean we just got to figure the infrastructure part out. Like, I, I mean, if we're going to get into the weeds of it, I, I feel like MLB is there. And obviously, you know, I have been working with them as an ambassador and like I'm in their ear every single moment. And obviously the department I work with is more charged with youth development and how, you know, we're getting into the community and, and youth. Um, but, you know, there's a pipeline there. So I'm definitely like, what are we doing? Like, are we like, literally all you have to do is turn on the lights MLB and, you bring in a flood of role models. Um, just the, like the investment seems so minimal to me, but I think the infrastructure is what we're really lacking. And, you know, obviously we've had so many iterations and um, that's been tough to get through um, just pro league wise. But I, I just, I think if we could figure um, the infrastructure, maybe that is MLB, or maybe it is something similar to what they have in Japan, where companies are owning teams and, you know, something like of that nature. And maybe it's infused with Athletes Unlimited, because that seems to be the, um, the product that is succeeding at the moment. Um, but, you know, I, I think we all believe that that Athletes Unlimited is a great way to amplify and highlight um, we're, we, you know, we love that team, like that team element. And if the, you know, in markets and if that we can duplicate that, I just think the infrastructure of who's going to hold this mold, um, is it companies? Is it MLB? I think that that's, that's where my brain is at, but I, I definitely think that MLB is, is getting close, is closer than we, we, we think. Um, and I think the work that they've done on the youth part has proven that there is a market there, that there is an interest there. And that it will help the already existing product of MLB on the on the baseball side, having that softball side. Um, so I think their toss up is also to like, um, you know, women in baseball as well and softball. So like, I think that's where the road splits for them a little bit. And I'm like, let's do it all. You know, like I, I want a place for everybody, like kind of, you know, the quote that you said earlier, like mm -hmm. I think I, I don't think that there is a, a limit on that part. So. That would be my message of, you know, I think the investment is minimal and I think the reward is out of this world. And obviously maybe it's biased because, we, you know, we just love our game so much. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think those are my thoughts of just I think we're closer than we think um, to something really coming to fruition. And just, you know, on a personal level, like I, I don't I think your question was just kind of like what. Right now, my focus is, you know, just bringing the game to everybody. Um, there's just so many girls that just don't even get the opportunity that are not exposed. And like, that's my story is, you know, after 2008 Olympics, I went on a speaking tour in South L.A., um, which is our inner city hit here in L.A. And like, just, yeah, you know, like 
the Olympics were great. And I played at my dream college. And this one little African-American girl, I'll never forget her face. She raised her hand and said, Miss Natasha, your story sounds so cool, but what is softball? And I'm like, it blew my mind. I, I grew up 45 minutes south from this young lady. I grew up in Irvine. And just because of like location, because of access, because of opportunity, I was exposed to the game. And so like that was a light switch for me of like, how can we continue to lower the barrier, expose everybody to this game? Because I feel like, you know, this game has given me so much. And like, I just, I could not imagine who I would be without being a softball player. And that has been my life's mission. Um, and I wouldn't even say like mission now, it's like purpose of, you know, just creating that access, just putting this game in front of like every girl, doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter what you look like, like let's lower that barrier, let's lower that cost. And so like, that's been, um, that's what I wake up and do every single day is like, okay, who's not, who's not getting, who's not getting touched by this game? How can we, how can we bring it to them? It's it, one of my coaches asked me the other day, she goes, what, what would you be if you weren't a softball coach? Like, what would you be? And I went, wait, what? <laughs> How is that even? Like, I guess I would coach baseball. Like, is I don't know. I mean, life without softball? Even, like, what? I didn't even know that was an option. Like, right. there's, there's, I feel the same. Option. I feel the same. Yeah. It's, but, you know, I think that when you, when you talk about, you know, the major, I, I think of Rachel Folden and you and I both, you know, I coached against, you played mm -hmm. against Rachel mm -hmm. Folden, mm -hmm. uh, great catcher, great hitter. Yeah. Um, I, I believe she played at Marshall and mm -hmm. coached at Valparaiso way back when. And now she's, mm -hmm. she's, I think she's in the Chicago Cubs organization, or at least she was yep. the hitting coach. Yep. And Rachel Folden is one of the sharpest, yep. brightest, yep. smartest, intellectual, like understanding hitting. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and she could really hit. And I think that's something <laughs> that, you know, a lot of guys would have a hard time being able to say, wait a minute, you could what? You could really, yeah, you could really hit. Really hit, yeah. Backside of the ball, like nobody's business. And mm -hmm. I always think back to, and I don't want to reference this like as, but I think back to, you know, Jenny Finch and what Jenny did to, you know, Mike Piazza. And then yep. all of a sudden Barry Bonds is like, hey, yep. whoa, wait a minute. Like it's yep. kind of this macho type thing. Yeah. But there is so much more than just the, 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 the male, female dynamic. Mm -hmm. There is the game. You talk about team like yeah. the 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 ability to be a good functioning team member mm -hmm. whether you're the star or whether you're the, mm -hmm. the role player mm -hmm. being a functional team member is really good for society it's good yeah. for people to understand how to function in a team mm -hmm. that's why i believe athletes are the best in corporations yeah. because they truly understand adversity they understand yeah. you know um you know pressure but they more importantly know how to work together mm -hmm. and then, that's the one thing that I love. That's the one thing when you talk about professional stuff is you bring in all these stars together and everybody yeah. has to learn a role different than what they've maybe grown up to be. And I think yeah. that it's good for you as a, as a human being. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like just sports in general. I mean, just the whole dynamics. I mean, um, I, I, I think they just there's so much value that you gain from just being an athlete, being on a team, contributing in some ways and supporting, playing a supporting role in other ways. Like, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know who I would be without, <laughs> without softball. It's, it's, it's crazy, but also makes me so proud in the same, same breath too. So it's pretty yeah. cool. Well, you, you did a, you, you, you've been recognized um, as a, a, an, I, Again, Wikipedia, I told Coach Enquist, Wikipedia doesn't do her justice because the number of Hall of Fame, I can't even, like, I can't even be here all day. Yeah. But, so you inducted into the UCLA Hall of Fame, uh, I believe in 2014. So it seems to be that's the theme that the the major colleges have about a 10-year period before you can be a Hall of Famer. I'm, I'm sitting here going, well, how wasn't Natasha put in there in 2004? But there's a process, and you know, I, I totally understand that. Um, went into the the National Softball Hall of Fame, I believe, in 2020. Um, and reading some of the quotes from you know Mike Kendrea and you know Coach Kendrea, obviously, is a uh, a tremendous human being and mentor and coach and yeah. father figure to a lot of us. Yeah. And um, but but when you hear Natasha Watley, the Hall of Famer, okay, and I'm sure it's like nails on the chalkboard. <laughs> oh God! But, but think about it this way: so <laughs> Natasha Watley, the Hall of Famer. What is one piece of advice that Natasha Watley, the Hall of Famer, can give the little girl in the school who 
doesn't know about softball, doesn't know about being on a team, doesn't even know uh, uh, about the Olympics. What's, yeah. the one, what's the one piece of life advice that Natasha Watley could give to all those little girls and boys that just want to be better at something? The biggest advice is, you know, obviously, yes, just trying something, but you never know who you could become, you know? So um, you never know who you, who you could ever be. You never know what you're capable of until you just try. And I think that that softball has given me that. I mean, I talked about college and like how I came in to the game and how I ended, like looking back, like, wow, like I never knew I could get better. Um, go on and play pro. Like I never, you just never know who you can become until you go through the process, until you try to make adjustments. And so to that young girl, it's, you know, you don't know where you could be standing 15, 20 years from now because you just went for it, because you just tried. And maybe, yeah, you're not, maybe you don't become an All-American, maybe you don't become an Olympian, but there's all the things that we just talked about, all those tangible things that you gain from playing sports, the things that you learn about yourself, like, wow, I can push myself a little bit more and I can get better at whatever it is. I think those are so many tangibles that you can take. And I, I, you know, I, I think we all feel that way about sports because it tests us in so many ways. It, it gives you adversity, but then there's moments where you win and those winning moments are like so contagious. So like, that's what I talked about before. It's like, you know, that quote you said, that's just like, it's like, okay, like I experienced a win. So how could I replicate that in all facets of life? You know, if I'm gonna, you know, take up quilting, you know, like how can I be the best quilter? Just whatever. I don't know. When you experience wins, it's, it's this most gratifying, self-gratifying thing that you experience. And it's just a way to continue to show up and be better. And so my biggest advice is just go for it and try. You never know who you can become. You never know what you'll be. You never know what you'll gain. Um, I'm The one thing I do know for sure, you'll gain way much more than you'll lose by just going for it and trying. So that, that, that would be my that would be it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's so many so many things wrapped into one. I, and that's the you you talked about not. Uh, I tell you what, I would say this. And I'm sure there's probably a hundred of them per year. If you ever wanted to coach again, that you could be my dugout any day. <laughs> you'd, be the, you'd be the best recruiter, the best oh, advice um, person that we could have. Mm -hmm. I'm sure at some point in time you're going to be the 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 best uh, teacher uh, to your daughter and get her where she's slapping and hitting homers or being what she wants to be <laughs> crazy crazy if she even picks up a bat poor thing i mean it's, i know i it's, couldn't even imagine you know how it is with teaching it's true though stuff. but the, but kids kids it's funny you 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 are natasha watley and your 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 daughter's going to grow up and go okay great my mom but your kids are going to be what they want to be they're not going to be who you want them to be all the time they're going to just do what they want to do exactly and, and you exactly. just hope you giving them the right uh, exposure to things that, you know, are going to, going to make them happy. You know, I think that's, yeah. that's, that's stuff. But yeah. so, the, so the, the game has obviously treated you, uh, treated you very well. You've treated the game, not only in the game, but post in the game, you've treated it very well. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about a, a, a couple uh, quick things for you. Okay. And it can't be Monica Abbott because she was okay. your teammate for too many years. The toughest pitcher you've ever faced and why? Um, well, the toughest pitcher I face, I mean, obviously I, you know, I would give Lisa Fernandez a little bit of that, but like person who I face like consistently, consistently is Yukiko Ueno. So she's a Japanese pitcher. I mean, you talk about someone who is made up. I feel like she's computer generated, <laughs> um, not human. Uh, like, and I have faced her since 2000, all the way up into 2016, 17, when I retired. So, you know, playing her on the Japanese national team. And then when I went over there to play professionally, I saw her more. Um, and every single time I faced her, she was a completely different pitcher. So I was like, okay, you know, like you want to blow smoke. Okay. Like, well, I'm going to be able to eventually time up to your smoke. Now you're going to throw all these change-ups, like every single pitch, like she was, you know, and then like she went into becoming like a drop ball pitcher. Um, one of the most difficult pitchers I've ever faced. And I think just to, she's really smart 
And when you are facing a smart pitcher who's just unpredictable, it's like the most uncomfortable feeling in the batter's box, right? Like I just like, I have no idea what's coming. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's simple, you know, and I at least have an idea. I'm a little bit more confident. I can swing a little bit bigger. I can be a little bit more on time. Um, when I have no idea, I'm running through the box. I'm like tripping over my feet. Like I just, you know, <laughs> like, it's just I, I, like, I've, I, she's probably the one pitcher that has made me feel very, very uncomfortable. And so um, definitely hats off to her. Yeah. She's, she's probably the best. Well, she's a, I think she, that if I did my, math correctly she's a two-time gold medalist as well yeah, yeah. um you know so now mm -hmm. she's at 2008 2020 olympics um doing it for a long time and and, and, and they keep saying so we're we're I, I'm, I'm assistant coaching and i got to coach with one of your form with one of your former teammates in taraya we got to win a, a world championship the junior world championship together in 2015 great experience with her in the dugout just a really cool person to learn a different a different way but still a uh, a good way and a good yes. human being yep. but we always prepare when you're talking world championships when you're talking medals you always talk japan it's always mm -hmm. going to be japan yep and, and they're like oh yeah well way knows she's retired now i'm like yeah i'll believe it when i see it we're yep. going to go to the world championships this summer in in italy and if she's not there as a player she'll be there somewhere as a yeah. coach or um i've yeah. heard i would never actually um, competed against her. So all the teams that we've, we, she's, she's never pitched either. She mm -hmm. wasn't available because they were saving her for the Olympics. Yeah. Um, or she was not available because she was probably yeah. like that. She was recharging her new pitch. Yeah. <laughs> her, her battery. She's computer generated. Yeah. She's not real. The girl yeah. is not human. She's yeah. not human. Um, That's she's legit. Legit. She looked like it. It looked like it. I see all the, you know, all the stuff we, I was doing a thing with, with Kelsey Stewart and, and with Aubrey, and they just talked about it and, and watching Kelsey and Aubrey deliver in the world championships, uh, I believe it was 2018 to, to qualify for the Olympics. And they had to go through Wayno to do it. And Aubrey gets a double and Kelsey gets a double. And I was like, this is, I mean, all the things you could dream of as a player yeah. that, you know, that yeah. it was really cool delivery. But. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So let's, let's shift to um, the, the, the last question, just because I think this is one of the best or worst either one you choose dugout moments that you can ever remember as a, as an athlete, the best or worst dugout moments. And, and it could be whatever you want. Like I uh, coach Kendrea told me one, it was really pretty cool. Um, but yeah, best or worst think? dugout moment for you. Oh gosh. Best or worst dugout moments. I'm going to go with best and it probably was with pride. Um, like, Pride, playing on pride was a time where like I felt like the most loose, like where I could just have fun, like not that it wasn't serious or I definitely took it serious, but definitely goofiness, silliness. And I think there was a time we were going to like, I, I think that there was either rain coming or something like that. I don't remember what was happening, but we were supposed to do a clinic after. And we just like were so delirious off the walls and like losing a game. It just like, there was a lot. I don't really remember like what was happening in the game, but I know that we had this clinic after and like, we just wanted to make sure that we were still present for those kids because we were like so tired and delirious, but we're like, we are going to get this game in. And if we get this game in, we might as well just win it too, because we got to be all that for the kids. And it just was like this huge joke, got to be there for the kids. And we're dancing, silly, goofy. I, I mean, that's like, just kind of like what came to my head. And, um, we just had a really good time. I, I, I just, I, I think more of like the fun times. Like I don't really, I can't remember like a bad dugout moment. So I'm okay, sorry good. for like giving you good. No, that's, that's, <laughs> it's I just, think, pride was you know, fun. I always fun. reference this when I do, when I talk to people, I, I, Joe Madden, I love Joe Madden's approach to, to life. And Joe Madden had a quote after they lost game six of the world series. He's the Cubs manager. And the Cubs obviously had the, the goat, like they had that, that the curse of the goat. They hadn't won a championship in 90 some, maybe a hundred years. And after they lost game six, he goes, you know what? I think there's a, a positive and a negative Twitter. And I don't think you should be able to be on both. And he goes, <laughs> I like positive Twitter. And he was basically yeah. saying, Hey, don't kill us yet. We got another game to play and they won the world series the next game. But 
Uh, I knew that about you. You're you're a positive thinker. I'm going to tell you a funny story. This is this is a post dugout moment for me. Okay. I've never shared this with anybody publicly, and I think it's pretty funny because you'll you'll appreciate it. So we're on the uh, the Jenny Finch. We're part of the Jenny Finch professional tour where she's going around making all of her last appearances. You're on the team. It's 2010. So Jenny's going to go, you know, going to retire. And she comes to the pride and we played them in a four game series. She's with the bandits. And before the game, they give her a big giant like check for her to go to Hawaii. It's eight. It was eight days and seven night trip to Hawaii. <laughs> And, and they presented it to her and it was for her and her family. And, you know, and we're all cheering and clapping. And then she proceeds to go out there and pitch against us and shove it up our butt. She pitched amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I think you couldn't get a hit. Jessica couldn't get a hit. I could. I didn't even call any signs. There's no signs that day because she was amazing. Well, it was the Sunday. So it was great. Sunday, I'm getting ready to drive back to Gainesville. And, and our general manager, I won't even mention his name. He's, he's a good friend of mine today. I, li I love him. He's straight shooter. He goes, hey, uh, Don wants to see you at the office. Uh -oh. I'm like, at the office? Well, the office is 30 minutes from Disney, the other <laughs> direction, which is not closer to Gainesville. And we just got beaten. I'm mad. And I go, what does he want to see you? He just wants to talk to you about the, about the game. And I'm like, talk to me about the game? I said, well, why don't you give, I think it was Cat, why don't you give Cat eight days and seven nights in Hawaii? And maybe the outcome would have been a little bit different. Like, I just... <laughs> I lost my mind. And it was so funny because I'm a competitor and here I'm going to have to go see the boss about how we played terrible. And I jokingly said to him, ready, I'm going to say this. I go, what did you want me to do? Like, you know, because he wants us to win. And right. I go, what did you want me to do? Did you want me to bench Natasha Watley or Jessica Mendoza? And like, he was one of those. And it was just the funniest, like, professional moment that I've ever had. I mean, at the end of the day, you don't, I don't have those conversations. My athletic director doesn't meet me at the dugout. After right. The like the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> like it was so New York Yankees, like you know George Steinbrenner. I felt and I felt really excited because I was like, "Yeah, I stood my ground." <laughs> I get to the office and Don's like, "Hey, you know, we got to make a roster change. We got this, or we got that." Oh and, you know, I'm like, "Oh, so it really wasn't about the game. It was oh, more gosh. about why business." Can we, why yeah. couldn't we have done that in the dugout? Like you know, <laughs> right, right, uh, yeah. And I liked what you said, like. And you should have threw our names in there. Why didn't you give Kat, Natasha, like trips to Hawaii? Like, what are yeah. we doing? Like, yeah, come on. we, we yeah. probably yeah. all, uh, we all probably spent the day before or the night before at uh, Magic Kingdom, you know, <laughs> with, uh, watching the fireworks. I show. totally remember that. Oh, uh, man. Such a, yeah. Such a, such a good experience. Well, yeah. um, before I before I close the show, uh, I, I just I, I guess I would be remiss for all of the people that are watching it. Is there is there just, you know, besides growing the game and the professional, you know, thing is, is there one thing that you're doing? Um, you know, cause I know you're such an ambassador to people and uh, girls and boys alike. Is there one thing that, um, you know, that we can take from this podcast that, Hey, support this. Is there anything that you're supporting right now that, um, you know, that we should do a better job as, as, as softball advocates? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, I have my foundation and that's like, I I've mentioned that's like purpose, you know, always support around that. Um, the attempt is to make the game better and give access to all. Um, I mean, honestly, too, I, I, I mean, I really, I think buying into that, the pro league level, if, you know, there is a game or anything, you know, I know like Athletes Unlimited and um, Spark are playing and whatever, you know, like as a softball fan, it's like your duty to buy a ticket, buy a ticket, go support, be there, show up. Um if it's near you. And if, even if you fly there and you got to go there, I, I just think it's super important um, to continue to support and show up, man. Yeah. I mean, and it's easy to, you know, support the college game too. Like just coming out to a college game, college world series, like there's no environment like it. Right. I mean, just the environment that's been created there. Like what a time <laughs> to be yeah. an athlete to experience that. So just to be able to go and support that. If you're a uh, young up and coming softball family, get your daughter there. Just the fact that you mentioned about the clinic that you had, that you do post games and stuff like that. I know a lot of our athletes, you know, with, there's, you know, there's name, image and likeness, there's foundations, yeah. there's all yeah. the things that you can do, but you know, just buy, even if you can't go to a game, buy, buy, buy your favorite player's Jersey or, yeah. you know, support. Cause support. that's the thing about, you know, when you talked about, you know, here in the United States, that we don't have the 
you know, the, the market, we don't have the professional market or we don't have the industrial market like they do in Japan where you support yeah. an industry and, and you can be a workplace, but just to be able to support your favorite athlete. And to yeah. Be and I think that's the thing that, athletes. yeah. And that just like sparks something. I think that's the thing that we lack in, uh, you know, the States is like, there's, we just have so much access. Like we have an access to Skylar Wallace. Like I can go on her Instagram and I can follow her. So a lot of those things get taken for granted of just how, what a special athlete, a general age, generation, generational athlete she is for us right now. Right. So to, you know, support her, buy her Jersey, like that support, I sometimes think gets missed because of that access. Like I already, like I already follow her. I'm like, I'm engaged, but are you really supporting? Like there's a, yeah. there's a difference between like following and supporting. And I, I, I think that that's it too. Like, that lack that access just gets taken for granted. I think a lot yeah. nowadays in our game. Um, so the well, there's so much stuff going on. There's so many things to, and you know, this now, now you're a mom, you know, there's so yeah. much that you want to do in your own little bubble. Yeah. You get, you just, you forget about other things. My wife met, reminded me today. So this weekend is our yellow game um, that we, we, we support every year. We have a yellow game, which is to bring awareness to pediatric cancer um, our girls, we typically wear some form of yellow, whether it's a, a hat, stirrups, belt, the little things like that. And it's it's basically in recognition of all those kids that are fighting for their lives with pediatric cancer. You know, nothing worse than seeing a young person struggle. And, yeah. and my wife reminded me, she's like, hey, just remind yourself, we, we need to make sure that we're supporting the causes yeah. that we're, you know, that we're, that we're supporting. And I think it's really good for you to say it that way, because mm -hmm. we all want to see softball be successful on so many mm -hmm. different levels. Yeah. But we just all need to do our small, if we all did our small part for, yeah. you know, yeah. $20 a year for X, I mean, yeah. we all did that. I mean, yeah. we, we would have a lot more professional athletes. That's for agree. Sure. Agree. Agree. Yeah. And then, you know, when Skylar Wallace, when she is done with her collegiate career, it's, you know, like that continued support. Cause you know, she's, gonna be available for clinics and those things and i think it's just like those things it's the support yeah maybe you're going and you know maybe you're, you understand the fundamentals of fielding but like i think the connection and the support um you know that's how we continue to, to grow our sport and yeah. i think just continue to have our girls our, our young girls be exposed to um the great role models that are, are playing right now and that continue to play after college, for sure. When it gives them the the, the, the the thing that you said already, giving them the opportunity mm -hmm. to choose when they're done, yep. not being told that, hey, you're done. You know, exactly. I think that's a that's a big that's a oh, that's a big piece to let them choose when they're when their time's up as opposed to being told 100%. that your time's up. You know, I think 100%, it's 100 yeah. percent most powerful thing. Well, Tosh, oh, I, I would be my 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 right fielder. Her name's Katie Kissler. Katie Kissler was number twenty nine. And her sister's name is Natasha. And that was Natasha's number when she grew up. And, uh, you know, long story short, when I recruited her, that was what she chose. I want to be number 29, like my sister, who's Natasha, who Natasha chose 29 because of Natasha Watley. Um, so I, I had to throw that out there and give, give Katie uh, Kissler that little shout out. Oh, I love that. Oh, and man, that's Natasha, awesome. Uh, that was really that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Anytime you can connect. I, hey, I know her. I know her. No, you don't know her. Yeah. <laughs> We are connected. We are yes. we are all softball sisters, so we are connected. And I love it. I love, I love it. it. It makes my well, day. You are the best. Uh, you're very generous with your time. I, I really appreciate you uh, being on here. And like I said, we're just trying to grow the game and uh, make it better. And like you said, hopefully we can put this place, uh, uh, the game of softball, in a better place than when we got. I mean, we're all. I'm super. Like I told you, I don't know what I'd be doing. Super lucky Amazing. and lucky. More importantly. I'm lucky to have an opportunity to, to be in a dugout with you and win a championship with you yes. uh, and be together with you. You just, you're, you're just amazing. And just so thanks for your time. And uh, thanks for all the viewers or uh, for, for supporting this and for softball America being a, a, a generous host and just uh, bringing this, uh, bringing us out on the platform yeah. and making us, making us a little bit more. Known. Thank you. Thank Good you. Coach Walton. Thank you for doing this and, and you know, just that. making the game better. So thank you. Yeah, love you, Tasha. That you're love the you best. I'm super proud of you having having your 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 daughter, and I can't wait to meet her. So, yes. congratulations. Tell your family I said hello. Awesome. Okay, talk Thank to you soon. You. All right, bye -bye. thank bye -bye. you.